What's up, peeps? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Five Questions with Frank. And today, my guest is Joshua Miller. He's an Amazon best-selling author, a master certified executive coach, and a creative leader in the personal and professional development field, who also happens to write for Medium, Thrive Global, oh, and he's also been a TEDx speaker. <laughs> His book, I Call Bullshit, Live Your Life, Not Someone Else's, is a fantastic read for anyone looking to take control of their life and live the life they want to live and not someone else's. Joshua is a very active contributor to LinkedIn and has over 100,000 followers on LinkedIn, which is pretty impressive. And that's where I met Joshua. Joining us from San Francisco, California, please welcome Joshua Miller. Josh, thanks for being on, brother. Thank you, Frank. Thanks for having me, man. I'm super, super excited. Let's get after it. All right, so love to start this off by giving you the opportunity to, to share with us as, as personal as you'd like to get uh, or as, as non-personal as you want to get, but give us a day in the life of Joshua and uh, what makes you tick and, and really what, what really gives you purpose in life. So I'll answer those three questions backwards. What gives me purpose is providing possibility for other people, right? It could be the smallest act that you do on any given day that changes someone else's life completely. So on a profound level, that's what drives me. What motivates me and what gets me up in the morning is my family, my wife, my two kids. Um, they are my rock. And then to answer the first part of that question is, a day in the life, I get up at 2 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. And I spend about 15 minutes just meditating. <clears throat> I drink a glass of uh, lemon water every single morning. And then um, I get dressed and I put on my gym clothes and then I look at some emails and kind of catalog through my day to make sure it's going to go as kind of how I have it planned out. I hop into my car and I get on the, the road to my office in the gym, which is about an hour's drive. And I typically either listen to um, some sort of podcast or I actually start my coaching clients at around 3, 3.15 a.m. Pacific because uh, on the East Coast, that's around 6, 6.15 in the morning. So I'm a big believer in how do I utilize every moment of every second of every day so that I can maximize stuff, but not in the way that a lot of people think. It's really because I set very clear boundaries, and I'm more than happy to talk about that later. But one of the things that I've learned in order to be successful is you have to learn how to say no, and you have to create very, very specific boundaries and uphold those boundaries. So for me, once I leave the house, I am working. As soon as I walk back into my home, I am absolutely 100% with my family. The phone doesn't open. My computer doesn't open. So the rest of my day looks like meetings, phone calls, so on and so forth, right up until about four or five o'clock. And then I spend another hour or two in my car, again, working, because I learned how to just manage that. And uh, I do that Monday through Friday. Weekends never work in my entire life. That's, that's awesome. And it's a, a big, powerful thing that I'm really excited you, you, you said and mentioned was, was family. Yeah. I think that that's uh, often when we speak to someone or we ask about who they are, you know, it's kind of like what they do for a living. And, and, and when someone leads with family, that really, truly, truly impresses me because I, I think that is what, what lives in, in my core and, and obviously it lives in yours. So that's super, super impressive. Yeah, definitely. So, so, so how'd you get, I know your story and I, I know a little bit, I, you know, I did some sure. investigative work on you, which is really interesting, but I, I know some of your story and I would love for you to, you know, kind of share the journey uh, of Joshua Miller and, and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, totally, man. So born and raised New York city by way of Manhattan. Um, you know, look, I went to, I was very fortunate to go to one of the best schools in all of, all of New York city. Um, and the, but it was the wrong school, wrong culture fit, wrong place for me. And the reason I share that with people is because what I started to learn, or at least what I was exposed to at a very young age was, how do you adapt to situations that you may not feel are the right fit for you? But of course, when you're in high school, you don't really understand that. You just need to get through, take your test and graduate. So for me, I was always a creative kid stuck in a very academic world. Uh, my parents were both artists and they encouraged and nurtured me to do that. And so what happened was I went off to school and studied communications and graphics, graphic design. And a lot of people don't realize that's where I started my career, right? And I'll get to how I got into coaching in a moment. So what happened for me is that 
I was in a very specific niche, which was advertising, marketing, kind of graphic design and packaging. And I just took off with my career. I was very lucky. I was very fortunate. I worked hard. I worked smart. But ultimately, at the ripe age of like 23 years old, I was burnt out. I was having a midlife or quarter life crisis. And I just thought I was probably depressed and this cannot continue. So what happened next was I literally fell into coaching. And this is what I tell people in my book is that I was walking out of my office one day, completely just kind of, you know, exhausted. It was a Friday afternoon, rush hour in New York City, 8 million people trying to get nowhere fast, right? And all of a sudden, someone hits me in my shoulder. I just spin around, just lost my footing, slammed on the ground, uh, cement right on Madison Avenue, fractured my nose in two places. I'm sitting there, or lying there, I guess, bleeding, right? People are walking over me, and all of a sudden, I hear this voice in my right ear. It says, excuse me, are you okay? Now, normally, I would have said, just you know, leave me alone. I'm fine. Get up. Blood. I just hop on the train and go home like every other New Yorker does, right? But I said, no, actually, I, I need some help. Can you help me? And, um, and she said, yes. And she kind of like helped me up and brought me to the side of the street. We called an ambulance. We started talking, and I had blood gushing from my nose. I was a mess. And um, this conversation with this particular person, I asked her what she did for a living. And she said, I'm a coach. And I said, Oh, for what team? For, you know, for what sports team? She goes, no, not that kind of coach. I'm a, I'm an executive coach. And I said, I don't know what that is. And she says, I help people. And I go help them. What? She's like, get out of their own way to be happier. And I said, that's a thing. And she said, yeah. And I go, tell me more about that. And she's like, you know what? I think let's, we focus on your nose, right? Like I had my head up here and and I was like, no, 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 I need to know more. And so she kept talking and talking 20, I think it was like 26 minutes went by before an ambulance came. They took me to the, to the hospital. And as soon as they were putting me on the back of the ambulance, I said, listen, you got to come with me. She goes, what are you talking about? I go, I need to, I keep talking to me. I want to know more. We talked for about almost two hours. And then she finally left me. She probably thought I was crazy. She left me at the hospital. She said, look, here's my information. If you want to get together with me again, please co contact me the next day. I call her up. I said, listen, this is that guy, Josh. You helped me on the street. I'd love to meet with you and learn more about how, how you got to where you are and what you do. And she said, sure. So I met her. I had gauze pads sticking out of my nostrils, black eyes, tape on my nose. And uh, we spoke for another three hours, Frank. And basically, she gave me the roadmap on how I could go from where I was, which was really not happy but successful, to what I later would find out is my calling, my purpose, which is to help people as a coach specifically. And it was that interaction, it was that one in an eight million chance that I decided to let some stranger help me. And that person really changed the course of my life. And uh, I'm in my 20th year coaching now. I, I mean, I've been blessed. I, I just tell you, I, I feel like, you know, at 45 years old, I've found my, my stride and I'm in my lane, and I'm just so unstoppable and excited about what it is I get to do every day for people. Uh, so it's so amazing because not only I, I knew the story, but for you to share it and hear it coming from you, um, I'm a, a believer in, in whether or not anyone listening in might, might be, but chaos theory is something that I kind of uh, intrigues me. And yeah. if you would have left that office six, ten, ten seconds before, oh, yeah. or if that guy wouldn't have bumped you, it's like all these things. It's like do, you know, do, do you thank yourself for leaving the office at that moment? Do do you thank the guy that bumped into you, the woman yeah. that stopped? It's like all this all these things that kind of connected you to, to and, and then literally you're pouring blood and you're like, Hey, you know, talk to me about what you do here. Like, how do you get paid? People pay you to do this. It's like amazing what happens in our lives that, um, that it, it's a way things turn out. You know, it's like, like you said, 20 years ago, like here you were doing this, you know, this happened to you and, and kind of put you on this path and this journey right. to where you are today. And I think that's for anyone tuning in, that's really what I, I, I love for someone to get out of something is that where you are in your journey doesn't matter where you start out. Like you said, you, know, you started out, you went to this great school, but the school wasn't the fit for you. Like you, I, I remember you talking about, you know, you were, everyone was an A plus student. You were, a, a, you know, kind of the B and C's type student yeah. where you, know, you didn't, you weren't there. Um, and um, you called them athletes, you know, everyone was a math <laughs> lead. So, oh. um, so funny because a lot of people are there like, ah, oh, you know, I don't fit in. I'm not this brightest person in the room or I'm not the person who wants to bury my nose in a book and study all yeah. the time. But you do what you got to do to get to certain places. That doesn't mean you need to stay there. I think that's... No super important for the audience to hear. You don't, you shouldn't be complacent, but you should also acknowledge that whatever you're going through is 
is a stepping stone to something bigger. And I know that that sounds a little cliche and it's hard for people when you are one inch away from that stone, you can't see where the cliff is in the next, the next rung to the kind of ladder, so to speak. But everything happens for a purpose. One of my favorite movies of all time is a movie called Adjustment Bureau. I don't know if you ever heard of that with Matt Damon. I and uh, I have not, but I have a fan of Matt Damon, so I'll check that out. Check it out. It's all about predetermined destiny and stuff. And he tries to write his own. And a lot of people struggle with where should I be next? Where should I, who should I follow? What should I do? And they emulate and emulate. And somewhere down the, down the road, I think that it, imposter syndrome sets in because they lose their direction. They lose their way. I would say based off my story is that for people listening, the takeaway I would hope you would hear is to be open to what's possible. Even if you're at your lowest, even if you're listening to this right now and you are at a job sitting in a cubicle, miserable, do not give up on yourself. There is always possibility present. You just have to look for it. When you give up on yourself, you will miss out on the opportunities. But if you have just a little bit of hope, you'd be surprised at what may just show up. Awesome. So that, that answer there kind of tied into the second thing I was going to ask you, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you anyway, which is that what advice would you give that person who's sitting there, um, you know, maybe get a little bit more tactical, but I'm, I'm, let's just say yeah. someone list tuning in right now, they're in a, a career where they're like, Hey, I got my degree. Um, I'm making good money, but I, I don't, I, I don't, this is not where I want to be. And I know in my mind I can play some tricks to say, yeah, this is great. I can justify it, but I really want to be somewhere else. Um, so, so what advice would you give someone who's kind of been, you know, like you knowing where you've been and, and where yeah. you are now, even though it took a broken nose for you to get there. Um, when the broken nose moment, how, how, do, how do people get there? So there's a couple of things. First and foremost, you know, I would tell everyone listening, and this is going to be tough for some people to hear. Don't chase the paycheck. I'm not saying to be irresponsible. I'm not saying to, you know, live at home for the rest of your life. What I'm saying is, is that, and, I'm, and I want to be clear, this is not about purpose or passion. Like, I don't want to use cliche terms. What this is about is following your heart. If you're quiet enough, you will listen to what actually lights you up, what you actually enjoy. And if you're struggling with that, then just ask yourself, when was the last time you laughed? What were you doing, right? That's where you want to start. It's not as complicated as everybody makes it. You know, there's a formula and a model and then go through this assessment and it'll spit out 10 things you should do. No, you don't need to do all that work. You need to just get a little quiet, silence all the noise and distractions. Think about when are you happiest? When are you at your best? Because that is where the conversation and the journey begins. So that goes with not following the paycheck because a lot of times people get hooked on the money. I get it, right? We got to live, we got to be responsible. But there are ways in which you can subsidize that paycheck to follow your passion. And one of the things that I encourage everyone to do is to find a way to have it all. And as a coach, I talk a lot about, contextually speaking, creating a life of not either or, but and. So a lot of people live, Frank, in this world of, I can either have a paycheck or I can go do my side business and hustle an entrepreneur. Uh, I can either go out or I can you know, stay home and pay the bills or whatever it is. And it's very self-defeating. And growing up in New York City, what I didn't realize until I moved out of it is that your quality of life is always about sacrifice and suffer. Sacrifice, suffer, sacrifice, suffer. And somehow you try to make it meaningful and it doesn't have to be such a sacrifice. So what I would offer up to people is find a way to have it all. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but it is possible. And it doesn't always mean you have to chase a paycheck. The other thing that I would encourage everybody to do is to get curious, right? We get desensitized every day with technology and Instagram and this and that. We forgot to actually engage and ask questions, right? And that's why I love your show is because you just ask questions. And I, as a coach, I obviously love that. Just ask questions, get curious. And then probably the most underrated thing in the world is be persistent as F. I cannot stress this enough. When people look at my career, I'm like, oh, wait, how did you do all these things? Yeah, some of it was luck, some of it was smart, hard work, all that other stuff. But one of the things that I was is persistent. I just don't give up. If somebody says no, I say, why not? Then when? If somebody says not now, then when? If they say you're not good enough, then I said, tell me why so I can get better. Doesn't mean I'm going to come back to you. I'll go somewhere else. If somebody says I can't do something, and that this has kind of been my life as the underdog, I'm going to prove them wrong. Whatever it is for you, however long the stick is or the carrot, figure it out and be persistent, 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 because that's not something you need to learn in school, by the way. A lot of people say, oh, well, you know, persistence, I have a degree in that. No, you don't, right? You just, you either get hungry 
and you go after it or you don't. And I tell people, life is short. And here's the thing. If you don't go after it, I guarantee you there's about five other people behind you that are already going after it. So if that's not enough to motivate you, then I don't know what is. But when you're clear on what your heart tells you and what you're excited about and passionate about, you will find the motivation and then engage in the persistence. Do not give up. Sorry, that's, that's, my, that's my, my rant. Awesome. That was welcome. <laughs> I'm sure folks will love that because that was very deep and very impactful. So love it. Um, so yeah. I know you've worked you know, in, in, your, in your executive coaching and you've, you're, you've worked with some pretty impressive you know, four, uh, you know, top uh, 100 groups. So um, when, when you look at who you've worked with, you know, either uh, their teams or folks professionally, um, you've seen a lot, you've heard a lot, you know, you've you know, kind of helped people get a- along their path in different ways. Um, and what, what do you see that, and, and about what you do that you actually you love? It's like, this is, this is why I keep doing this. This is what is, you know, drives you. What is that? What is that thing? Hmm. So I would say the moment I'm in working with one person or a hundred people and the whole room starts to pop, everybody starts to get an aha. Everyone starts to, oh my God, I never realized that. I never knew that. I didn't know I did this. The moment you start to see that, experience it and feel it is when you know you're making a difference, right? You can read quotes and be motivated all day. But there's a fine line between motivated and taking action. So what I look for is not the inspiration, but the action connected to it. And so when I'm working with people in any kind of atmosphere environment, my goal is not to just inspire people to take action. People can get inspired on their own. Uh, it's really to drive the inspiration and connect it to something important for them. And when, when that happens, it's magical. That's when I just, I, I get my purpose I see it. I'm connected heart to heart, head to head. That's what I love. I mean, I'm just, I feel so blessed that I get to do this every day. Like this is an actual job. This is, this is more than a job. It's really just who I am, but I mean, I get to do it. So it's, it's amazing. Awesome. Um, yeah. so, so with that, you know, kind of on the other side, if there's something you see a lot, you know, it's like, Oh, I always see this and I wish I could yeah. change it. Or, you know, people always say this or, you know, wh- whatever it is, this mentality that people have or, what, yeah. what is something that you would change knowing that you've worked with so many people, you've worked with huge, big brands and, and very successful, uh, it, you know, um, professionals in, in different industries. What is one thing that you hear a lot or that you see that you would say, ah, if I could change this, this would be it. I think, I think I would change the status quo. This is just coming to me right now. I'm not really thought about it. I mean, I think there, everybody decides at some point, especially in organizations, this is what we want. This is what you need to be at and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, we self-select into organizations based on culture fit and job scope and so on and so forth. But what I would change is really just the ability for people to choose in a more empowered way what they want to do. And I know that sounds maybe a little vague, so let me be a little clearer. There are certain skills going into 2020 and beyond that people are going to need to have, like complex problem solving, creativity, critical thinking, more emotional intelligence and also people management. I think a lot of times people just jump into jobs for a variety of reasons, and I get it, but I would change how people enter into the workforce. I think between high school and college and career counseling, I really think there's a gap between how we are um, readying ourselves, right, and our young leaders and, and getting into the workforce. I mean, here's one thing I will tell you, Frank, that it shocks me to this day that colleges and schools don't do, which is do interview training. Nobody does that. Like it may be an elective, but it's not an actual course. And it's probably one of the fundamental skills I spend so much time working with people on, do the pre-work, what do you do in the interview and what's the post look like? And it amazes me when I see some of the most brilliant people who lack some emotional intelligence or just common sense on, well, I didn't follow up. I didn't know I should. I thought they would come to me. So I would change how people engage and go into interviews, into the workforce, and I'd take a look at what the status quo looks like. That's kind of my big picture. If you gave me an endless amount of time and money and said, go fix this, that's what I'd go work on. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Um, so you, did, you talked about some things and skills and, and you know, maybe you know, even talents that we might need yeah. as we look into the future. Um, but what what, where are we going? Where, where do you think if you look out on the landscape and knowing the folks you work with and kind of seeing 
people you coach, um, whether yeah. it's teams or individuals, you know, we're, we're five years, 10 years out, you know, what, what, what does that look like? We are, what it looks like is um, almost like a jack of, jack of all trades, master of none. I really believe that we are headed into a more entrepreneurial, uh, fluid type of workforce where people are going to be expected, yes, we hired you to do X, but you equally need to do Y and Z and maybe A, B, and C. Now, it, you know, the studies have shown that people stay at certain companies for two, three years, right, on average, millennials and so on and so forth. So I think one of the things that I see trending is people being able to jump from one role to another. Now, that doesn't mean that they could go from a marketing expert into coding JavaScript. Maybe, I don't know. But the one kind of, I would say, connective tissue to this is being able to have a high level of people management, emotional uh, intelligence, um, being able to complex problem solve, analytical thinking. These types of skills are going to be what are needed most and what those people will have or demonstrate so they can go from one pocket within an organization to another, right? And the second most important thing is I see companies getting a lot uh, more refined and crisp around their purpose. Because as the workforce progresses and millennials are starting to take over more and more, it, all the studies have shown that they have to feel connected to what they do, right? They have to feel that emotional um, uh, response and connection to, in, is what I'm doing going to move that company and, and, and the planet forward? And if it's not, guess what? You can pay me a million dollars in stocks and warrants. I don't care. I'm leaving. And, and it, I see it. I see it all the time. So I think there's going to be more of a heart-centric focus around the people who go to companies and then the companies actually engaging with them in a, in a way that's different than just perks and salary. It's going to be more about mission focus and purpose focus. That's what I say. Awesome. Great. And that's very insightful. Appreciate that. And, and, yeah. and and I, and I totally agree. I think that, you know, as a, as a employer uh, myself with, a, you know, quite a few millennials, I'd say probably, you know, 40, 45% of our team is millennials. We yeah. see that. Um, yeah. Sure, people want money, they want to get paid, but they do want to be attached to something. They want to see, what am I doing that's making a difference? And that's Absolutely. where we're, internally we work on that all the time, identifying our core values and those types of things. So I totally agree with you and, 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 and I myself am, am living it. So, um, it's Well, you just said it right there. It's, it's identifying it, but it, then it's embodying it. You've got to live it. And, and the workforce today, they'll sniff out if you're full of it. They'll know if it just sits on a wall and say, here are the 10, five things that we believe and we want to, you know, em empower people around. But if you say one thing and do something different, you're going to, you're going to have a high rate of attrition. That's just a fact. Yes. Awesome. So thank you uh, for being yeah. on. Thanks for such, such insightful <laughs> answers. What, sure. um, now someone's tuning in right now. They want to, you know, they're like, I need, I need Joshua Miller in my life. Where, where yeah. do they find you? Where do they go? Um, you know, I know that you're extremely active on LinkedIn, but you know, where, where else are you at? And how, do, how does someone get in touch with you? If they, if they, yeah, no, I appreciate it. The easiest way to contact me is at my website, which is Josh middle initial H Miller.com. So Josh H Miller.com. Um, all my social handles are there. Um, you can also find me on LinkedIn. Of course, that's how we got connected. Um, and I have a new show, uh, which is my LinkedIn live show called Coach's Corner, Conversations for Emerging Leaders. Um, and that, that's every Tuesday at 7.30 a.m. Pacific. So you just have to follow me and then you'll get notified. But um, my website, LinkedIn, those are the best places to find me. Uh, I'm always around somewhere. So. I can be found. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks for being on. Thanks again for really giving the folks who tune in some insight into a peek into who you are and some of your thoughts and ideas. So really valuable content. And, and again, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate you having me on. It's been an honor. I appreciate it.